Welcome everybody to our first biology report. Um, we're all sitting at home right now waiting for the snow to melt so we can kind of go chase those sheds, um, which is brings us to our very first topic, which is going to be why bucks drop antlers. So a lot of people might not understand the whole scientific and biology of it. Um, so that's why we condense the information to make it very simple to understand. So bucks will drop antlers for the sheer factor of testosterone. And it all depends on the levels of testosterone on to why they, or when they drop. So we can kind of explain the levels in this chart. Down here is going to be summer, middle will be fall, the end will be winter. And this is levels of testosterone. So as bucks are really growing their antlers, testosterone levels are going to increase and it's going to peak right in the fall time. Why does it peak during the fall? Because that's going to be your peak rut time. So testosterone is really flowing. Bucks are getting aggressive to make sure they're tending to their does. But after rut, the levels of testosterone will then slowly start decreasing. And that brings us to this time frame, which is where we want to start looking at. So, after post rut, again, they're going to drop their levels of testosterone. And that is actually when testosterone will release a bone cell called osteoclast. And that bone cell, when it's released, will go towards the pedicle and the antler attachment and demineralize that connection. And that is what causes bucks to drop their antlers. So again, when they drop their antlers is factored on testosterone levels. When testosterone levels are at the lowest it will ever be, it will then release a bone cell called osteoclast which then demineralizes the attachment at the pedicle and the antler. So, and there's a couple couple factors that uh, influence levels of testosterone, and we're going to focus on three. Um, so we can do this. So these three can either increase or decrease uh, levels in testosterone. And we're gonna start off right after po or prime rut and you'll have an increase of testosterone if you still have hot dough in the area. So if some does didn't get bred or their, their breeding was not successful, they will become, they will go back into heat 28 days later, which will then prolong the high levels of testosterone within a buck. Therefore, it will increase, again, it will increase levels of testosterone, prolonging the osteoclast release. Therefore, they will drop a little bit later. The next factor is going to be malnutrition. and that will decrease levels of testosterone. So malnutrition can happen at any time in a buck's life or any time during the year. So, but we're really focused on post rut. So if that buck for some reason is not getting enough forage or it didn't uh, fill up its reserves pre rut to you know, let him chase those does, tend to those does as long as he wanted to, his body's going to be depleted, his nutrients are going to be depleted. Therefore, if he's having issues surviving and he's really struggling, he's going to drop his testosterone levels, which will then release the osteoclast and have those antlers drop early. Another factor is injury. 
And again, injury can happen at any time, but we're going to focus on post rut. Um, and that, again, is going to decrease levels of testosterone. So whether it's a car collision, a misguided arrow or bullet, or they just been fighting every single buck, they're sparring all the time, and they just have a prolonged injury, they're going to, again, drop their levels of testosterone. The osteoclast will then be released earlier than any other deer in the herd.